Today, we're here to talk about the iPad Pro, specifically for blogging. I purchased, this is the 2020 iPad Pro, so I got this last year, um, after ditching an older basic model iPad, and the iPad never used to be part of my personal workflow when it comes to content creation and blogging and business and entrepreneurship, anything, right? It's heavily part of my workflow now, so I wanted to take some time to talk about how I use this bad boy, the apps that work for me, and and show you what's on my iPad. So let's talk. We will get to this, but one of the ways I use my iPad is actually to plan out videos and what I'm gonna talk about and podcasts actually. Um, so it's come in handy for a lot of those things. But I just wanted to share a little bit to start about who I am and what I do. My name is Kelsey. I'm a content creator slash social media manager. I do work a full-time corporate job, but I do YouTube and blogging and content creation on the side right now, which makes having the right tech pretty important. So between my MacBook Pro that I've been using for a couple years now to I actually just bought the new, I pre-ordered the new iMac, um, the colorful one, got it in purple, pretty excited for that. To the iPad, to the iPhone, tech is really important for what I do, both for my corporate job and for my personal work. And like I said briefly, the iPad was just never really part of my workflow in general. I was big on using paper planners, I was big on using paper notebooks, um, I used my laptop for most things when it came to actually like blogging and content creation. It was because I had the basic model iPad. I can't remember the exact specs of it, but I'm pretty sure it was just the first basic iPad that they ever created to be able to use in tandem with the Apple Pencil. Um, so that was the reason I bought it because I thought I would just love to have the Apple Pencil and maybe that would get me to use the iPad. It didn't. It was basically a Netflix watching machine, which is a totally fine and reasonable thing to do with your iPad. But if you're gonna spend the money, I think you wanna be able to justify it, maybe a little bit more than that. Anyway, I went ahead and picked up the iPad Pro 20 2020, so last year, this is 2020, isn't it? I also just wanna claim I am not, as you can tell by my normal content, I am not a tech reviewer, I'm not a tech channel. I barely know what I'm talking about. I don't know the specs of things. Well, this doesn't tell me what year it is, but I will tell you the specs of this iPad that I got. So this is the iPad Pro 11 inch second gen. And I, like I said, I didn't use my previous iPad for anything with blogging or business or entrepreneurship or just personal life. Um, and one of the reasons was because I kind of cheaped out. So I did get that base model. And on top of that, I really, I got like, I got like 32 gigs. And I don't know about you, but my phone has more storage than that now. So with the iPad Pro, I decided I wasn't gonna cheap out this time. I was gonna really do my best to spend what I needed to spend in order to make this worth the money. So I did upgrade to 512 gigs on the iPad Pro. So that's the specs of the one that I got. Let's talk about how I use it and the apps that make my life a little bit easier. The first main way that I use my iPad Pro when it comes to blogging and business is actually for content or business planning. One of the things I've actually been trying this year that I've never tried before and I'm obsessed with it is utilizing PDFs in GoodNotes. So you can go on places like Etsy and you can actually buy these PDF templates or you could make it if you're creative and want to save yourself some money. You can actually create templates yourself to use inside of GoodNotes. So for me, I actually use podcast planners and a YouTube planner. The podcast planner specifically has been super helpful because, you know, I'm a rambler. So it's a little bit nice just to have something to kind of outline what I'm intending to say. And then if I ever have a guest on the podcast, I'm actually able to like send them that podcast plan doc so they know what we will be talking about and it makes it really nice and organized for the editor as well. Um, so yeah, just in general using PDFs inside of GoodNotes and using my Apple Pencil to fill those out, it's been really helpful. It's a little bit more convenient than say grabbing a paper notebook because it is more accessible to people outside of myself and I'm able to take it anywhere without having to carry multiple notebooks. I just kind of have this with me at all times. I'm literally reading off a YouTube planner script right now just to keep myself organized. So this is one of the ways that I actually plan for content using my iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil in tandem with it. The other thing I use very frequently on my iPad under this whole like business content planning category, um, 
um, would actually be Google Calendar and Google Tasks. This is a relatively new thing for me. Not Google Calendar, everybody uses Google Calendar, but Google Tasks has been a new thing for me. To-do lists, I really struggled with them. Planners, I've really struggled with them. And the reason I've struggled is because I've had a hard time differentiating between, I know my calendar tells me when I have meetings and I could make a random to-do list, but my problem is, especially with content planning, I might know I have a video going live on next Wednesday, but nowhere within my paper planner or to-do list am I assigning to myself when I would actually sit down and film, when I would sit down and edit, when I would sit down and do keyword research. So what I found was is that I would get to like the day before something needed to happen or go live and I would be rushing to get it done because I hadn't properly planned it out. So by using the Google Calendar app and the Google Tasks app on the iPad, I've actually been able to kind of wake up each morning and open it up sort of like a planner and know what I need to do that day. So I'm just waking up and executing rather than waking up and sort of aimlessly wondering what I need to get done. Now you can use those on a desktop or a laptop, but it just makes it a little bit more convenient on an iPad because it's kind of like as if you had your paper to-do list or your paper planner, but it's digital and it's thinner and it's lighter and it can go anywhere with you without having to take, you know, a notebook and a planner and a laptop. It's just all in one thing. The other thing I do on my iPad Pro that I will show you a little bit of a clip of is actually some of my keyword research. If you do any kind of content creation, blogging, YouTube, anything, you might have to do keyword research. So that is another thing that I do quite frequently on my iPad rather than my laptop because it's actually something that to be honest, doesn't necessarily require to me. It doesn't really require me to be so lasered in where I need to be parked at a desk and do it. Keyword research is something that I can actually do kind of while just flipping through it and watching Gossip Girl reruns, you know? Watching Friends, watching The Office, whatever you're watching. And that's the type of task that to me works really well on an iPad, particularly when I've got it in my folio case like this, because I just kind of get to sit there watching TV, but also thinking through content ideas that I might have and doing keyword research around that. So, so that is something I do on my iPad very frequently and it kind of falls under that whole like content planning bucket. So another thing that I do on my iPad isn't just the planning of content or business, but actually the creation of that content. I think it's pretty well known at this point that Apple is really known for being the creative's dream, right? So from apps like Procreate to, you know, being able to actually record podcasts on the iPad, or there's a whole suite of creative apps that creatives can use on their iPad Pro or iPad. But for me, this kind of manifests in a few ways, specifically for blogging and YouTube and podcasting, the most of which is actually writing my blog posts. I am definitely a bit of a fickle writer. I need to be able to find spaces where I can sit and really like zone in and focus and feel creative. And sometimes that means working from my desk, but sometimes that means working from our dining room table or even working from outside. And the portability of the iPad is really what makes the iPad my preferred method of writing blog posts. Now, the thing that makes that possible, and this was very different from the iPad Pro to my previous iPad, it really comes down to the Magic Keyboard. And I hate to tell you that I love this, but I absolutely love this. This thing is like two, 300 bucks on top of the cost of the iPad Pro as it stands anyway. I mean, man, is it expensive, but it has completely changed. It has completely changed my workflow for blogging. It has, it has suddenly allowed me to use my iPad almost like a laptop because between the actual keyboard and then also the trackpad, I mean, I, I just get to treat this like I would a laptop, but it's smaller and lighter. The real only bummer is just how darn expensive it is. So you can totally buy other options than the Magic Keyboard. I'm just an Apple loyalist in that way. I like the fact that there is pass-through charging right here so I can go ahead and like charge if I need to instead of plugging it directly into the iPad. It's just a very convenient thing to use, but writing is definitely one of the things I do on my iPad Pro a lot because it is so mobile and allows me to kind of take my writing on the go. Now, the other thing that I do personally for my blog on my iPad Pro is actually editing photos in Lightroom. So I do use the Lightroom app. I have a subscription to Adobe to allow me to use Photoshop and Lightroom, all that good stuff. It's a little expensive, but it's worth the money for me. And for me, I've actually really enjoyed editing photos on the iPad because it's a little more in my face. I don't know what to say. I think maybe when I migrate to the iMac, my first ever desktop that I will ever own, it comes sometime in June, I think. I do think that there will be a need for photo editing and video editing to maybe happen on that computer because it'll be a little bit more robust than anything I own right now. It's gonna have the M1 chip. It's just gonna be a little bit faster, a little bit sleeker, a little bit smoother, a bigger screen, all that kind of stuff. I do think when I get the desktop,
desktop, I could see how photo and video editing could be something I do in more of desktop mode. But for right now, I've actually really enjoyed being able to do it on the iPad because it allows me to kind of finish off my blog posts again without needing to sit down either at a laptop or at a desktop computer. This has been really useful when it comes to working from anywhere but my own home. So whether that's working from my in-laws house, whether that's working from my own parents house, whether that's when we travel, like there are just so many options. I think it's just a big deal that you could edit photo on here if you needed. So if you were in an instance where the iPad was the only thing you had, it's totally fine to use Lightroom in app form on the iPad. It's gonna look great. It's gonna get the job done. It's not gonna lag. And then I can upload it straight into WordPress from there. The other more creative thing that I do on the iPad is I actually use Procreate for my YouTube thumbnails. I've only just started doing this. I typically was making my YouTube thumbnails on my desktop in Photoshop. And then I discovered that I could actually use Procreate and have my own handwriting in my thumbnails. So that's what I've started to do just to kind of give a little bit more of a personal fun touch to my YouTube thumbnails. And to top all that off, I also assemble my content, my blog posts, and some of my YouTube videos inside of the iPad environment. My blog is hosted on WordPress and I'm able to just log in with, you know, Safari. There is a WordPress app, but it kind of sucks. So I don't recommend that. But I all the time will assemble my blog posts using just Safari and WordPress. And I use the Magic Keyboard to do it. This was something that prior to the Magic Keyboard, I really struggled with because I wasn't able to have like a mouse to allow me to like highlight things and add links and switch between tabs. And you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into assembling a blog post and you kind of need the dexterity that comes with a trackpad or a mouse. So having the magic keyboard has really made that very, very possible. And the last category of things I do on my iPad would be more like admin or personal stuff. And the apps that I really use for that would be PayPal to invoice brands if I need to, PayPal or QuickBooks. Those are the two ways in which I manage my own personal business finance. And I'm able to do all of that on my iPad, which is super convenient. There have definitely been a few times where an email will come through and I will realize that I need to like answer that on the fly and also get my invoice out ASAP because if I don't do it, I'm gonna delay a few days and then that's only gonna delay me getting paid a few days. So for me, being able to do those things on whatever device I have on hand immediately there when it needs to be done is really important. So it's nice that all of that functions really well on the iPad. And the last little thing that I'll do from an admin perspective is just keep an eye on my analytics. So I can do that either through the Google Analytics app. There's also a YouTube Studio app to keep an eye on those analytics, um, or I can check on Safari for Google Analytics or Chrome, whatever your browser of choice may be. Point being, I can kind of keep an eye on my business without needing the computers to do it. I just have this very sleek little device to be able to keep an eye on everything that's going on. So that is it for everything I tend to do on the iPad for blogging and running a business, the iPad Pro. I can't really speak to the latest versions of any of the iPads. I don't own them. I'm not a tech expert. Just to wrap up this video, if you're a blogger, a content creator, an entrepreneur, anything like that, um, I do think it's worth looking into the iPad Pro. I think the only thing to really assess is where it fits into your ecosystem. Now for me, when I got this, I was a little bit like, is this gonna make my laptop obsolete? It really hasn't, but that's because I don't own a desktop. So video editing and things that require just a little bit more power, I suppose, I tend to do on my laptop. Um, and I will definitely do that more on the iMac when I get that versus the iPad for me is the thing that I plan on. I treat it like a notebook. It's the place that I go to refer to notes I've taken. It is where I go to see my daily to-do list. It's where I can edit photos if I need to. It's where I can write blog posts. It's where I assemble things. It's where I, you know, if I'm creating a collage that has a bunch of links I need to get, I can go on there and do all my links. I can do my keyword research. So there's a whole host of things I can do on this that would not be convenient to do on an iPhone. And you'd have to park your buns at your desk to do it on a laptop. So I would just kind of assess where this fits in with your workflow because it's not a cheap purchase. You gotta make sure it makes sense for you. Do not cheap out if you do it. I've made that mistake where I've bought, I'm like, I can just save a couple hundred bucks if I get lower storage. Don't do that. I've done that and then it's ended up making the whole thing a waste of money. So it's been a great thing for me to have for my workflow. I'll definitely check back in with you guys after I get the iMac in my possession. I'm excited and yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna give you the usual spiel. Like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.